Good evening and thanks for joining us. A Gainesville woman is facing child neglect charges after driving drunk with two small girls in the back seat. Casey Anthony was acquitted in the little girl's death but found guilty of misleading investigators. State law says she can be forced to repay costs associated with her lying, but not the murder. The first day of class was an upsetting one for some parents in Marion County. Two teenagers accused of plotting to kill and chop up a classmate were in class. It's a murder that has several unanswered questions. A grandmother gunned down in her own driveway. I'm live in historic downtown Alachua, where they're expecting thousands, literally thousands of trick-or-treaters to come up and down on Main Street. Music is a safe haven for all kids. Many people may only know Cara Diagordi as a judge on American Idol. But she's also a singer, songwriter, and a music lover who says music was therapeutic for her when she was younger. It allowed me to express my happiness, my pain, whatever I was going through so I could figure out who I was. And she believes it can help others, which is why the Grammy winner was at Golden Hills Golf and Turf Club in Ocala this afternoon. Dia Gordy hosted a golf event to raise money for a music studio she's opening to help teens and young adults recovering from drug addiction. And when one LPGA golfer heard about the event, she knew she had to participate. It was a no-brainer to kind of get in the car and hop over and, and play in this wonderful event. The studio will be located at the Phoenix House in Citra, which is a drug rehab center. And one organizer says music can rebuild self-esteem for those in recovery. What music does is it re makes them realize they have talent, that they're, they're, there's an opportunity for them to make the, their way in the world, and it's all part of uh, re-establishing re their self-esteem. Whether it's through lyrics, whether it's through creating a beat, which sometimes allows them to get out their aggression, get out their anger. And it's her childhood memories of yesterday that motivate Dio Gordy to give back today. Dan Larkin, TV20 News. We're just excited to go forward with this and we think it's going to positively affect the industry as a whole. For nearly nine years, Chris Collins has owned Fat Cat's Artistry Tattoo Parlor in downtown Ocala. During that time, he's seen lots of customers <laughs> eager to sit in his chairs to get inked. But he also saw some major problems with the tattoo industry. You have uh, some practitioners working out of homes, working out of um, parties and things like that, and the general public didn't realize there was a difference. So they were getting this you know, substandard work and potentially dangerous work um, outside of a controlled and sterile environment, and it reflected badly on us as a business. It was those issues and his passion for safe tattooing that inspired him to help write the new legislation regulating his business. And Collins says it was a big deal, not just for him, but for the industry to have the bill signed into law. To have it finally come together and have the governor sign off on something that we helped write and produce was a, it was a big moment for the industry. The new law states no one under 16 can get a tattoo without a doctor's permission, and 16 and 17 year olds must have a parent with them. And each artist will have to take safety courses and pass an exam, which one artist says is a good thing. I'm all for it. Um, I think all tattooers should go through bloodborne pathogens uh, classes and be pro properly trained in them you know, so they're not cross-contaminating. Shops will also have to obtain a license and maintain levels of cleanliness monitored by the health department. And health officials say they like the changes. The health department had been interested in getting legislation of this type for some time. Uh, it was only thanks to the tattoo industry themselves that it finally happened. And I think we're all very pleased about the fact that now they will have licenses, they will be respected businesses, and uh, we're all very happy about that. Ultimately, the most important thing is the public safety. Which is not only good for Collins' business, it's good for the public's health. Dan Larkin, TV20 News. Welcome back. It was a stormy start to the work week in north central Florida. One of the hardest hit areas was Marion County. The rain led to flooding, which opened up a whole new set of problems, sinkholes. There's already tropical storm warnings in effect for pretty much the entire southern half of Louisiana and also into Mississippi as well. The good news with Philippe, it's going to take a pretty abrupt U-turn pretty quickly. It will gain strength as it does it, making it up to a Category 1 hurricane. But Philippe as well is going to drift off into the Atlantic. He's arguably the most popular athlete to ever wear orange and blue. And today, the legend of Tim Tebow grew even bigger after the former Gator led the Denver Broncos to a fourth quarter comeback and overtime win in his first start of the season. This event is going to be huge for our community. Everyone from the grounds crew to the players are making last minute adjustments as they prepare for the Cal Ripken World Series. The Rotary Sportsplex in Ocala is hosting the event, which features the 10 best teams aged 10 and under from all across the country. 
And one organizer says the tournament will give Ocala a financial boost. The economic impact, all of the, the dollars that are going to be spent here in our restaurants, in the gas stations, in the hotels, um, it's just going to be huge for us and help boost our economy. The Visitors and Convention Bureau, their projection was about $750,000 for our local economy. But the opportunity to host the event didn't come cheap. A $40,000 fee was needed to host the tournament, plus about $60,000 worth of upgrades went into the park, including a new scoring tower, bleachers, and even bases. The money came from private donations as well as the city and county. And one coach says the money spent is worth it to see the kids play the game they love. It's all about the kids, and um, just to see the, them experience this is what means the most to us as parents and, and coaches and, and members of this park. So we're just really excited for the, for the event and for the kids. And one player says playing for a World Series trophy like the big leaguers do is a dream come true. This is my dream. I've wished this since I was like six. I've been like, okay, I've been watching these people on TV. I really want to be in that same position they are. And even if the Venom don't bring home the championship, officials say the city of Ocala will definitely hit a home run. Dan Larkin, TV20 News.